all have a story. That's true, right? We all have a past. That's true. We all do. And uh, we all have a future. We don't know how long, uh, how, you know, as far as on this planet, we don't know how long it's going to last, but we all have a future. And it can be a future filled with hope. But there are these hope busters, and I think this morning I want to talk about the one that gets most of us. Uh, if the truth were known, and we went from person to person around this room, uh, it would become very evident that all of us have things in our past that we wish we could go back and undo or redo. Relationships, a, a certain period of time in our life, a weekend, a night, a decision, a financial commitment. All of us have things that we wish we could go back to and do differently. It changed the trajectory of our lives. Perhaps it didn't seem wrong at the time, and, and, may, and probably it didn't. Maybe we were younger, and we thought we knew some things back then that we are learning that maybe we didn't. Maybe it seemed like the right decision at the right time. I mean, how could it be wrong if it seemed so right, if it feels so right? It just, it's just right. Remember those feelings? After all, everybody's doing it, we thought or even said to our parents sometimes. But now, as you look back at all the pain that it's, that, that it's caused, that decision you made, it's caused you pain and maybe others around you pain, you just wish you could undo it. And you wonder how you will ever be able to forgive yourself. How could I be so stupid? Maybe you know... You knew that at the time it was wrong, but you had no idea what the consequences would be. It's just a little thing. Nobody's going to care. Nobody's going to notice. If only you could go back. The problem is, you can't. If only you could put the past behind you. But you can't. And if, you, if you've asked God to forgive you, he has. And if you've done the best you know how to patch things up with those you have hurt, maybe they've forgiven you too. But it still haunts you. And you feel guilty. And you don't know if you'll ever be able to forgive yourself. How can you move beyond your past? Is it possible that you can really be free and move on and leave the past behind. And with all the authority of Jesus Christ, I say to you today, yes, that is possible. And you can experience freedom in Christ, not just, not just the freedom, and not just not a word, but an experience in life that God has for each one of us. There is hope for you no matter who you are. Now, if we don't forgive ourselves, it really becomes a problem, and it's a problem that's unseen. We don't even figure it out sometimes. Uh, we, we, become, we start to become angry with ourselves, and we, we live our lives always just a little bit angry. It's, it's been called free floating anger by psychologists if you're into psychology free floating anger you could you could look that up on the internet it's anger that's right below the surface and the least little thing causes it to spill out on those around us i like to think of of it as having like a teacup on top of your head and all all of us are walking around we've got this teacup on the top of our head and it's only when we get bumped in life a little bit that whatever's in that comes out all over people. Have you ever gotten splashed upon by somebody you don't even know what you did and they went, what, what was that? That's what's in that teacup that's inside, or that bowl maybe that's on top of your head. And it only comes, what's really in there comes out when you get bumped a little bit. And this whole COVID thing and everything has really bumped many people. And there are people who are angry. And it's coming out. 
And when you're bumped around a little bit, and uh, what, what's inside you comes out, you might even respond like, where, where did that come from? Or your spouse might ask you, where, what's that all about? Why such a huge reaction for a smaller thing? It's not, not a fun place to be. And a person who is unable to forgive themselves eventually transfers those feelings onto God. I don't like me, and God probably doesn't like me either. You ever thought that or said that? I'm disappointed in me. God's probably disappointed in me too. I don't think I'm such a good person. God probably doesn't think I'm all that great either. I know he loves me because, I mean, he's God, and, you know, he's supposed to do that, right? I mean, God loves for God to love the whole world. I got that part of it, but uh, I don't think he likes me very much. I'm kind of one on the lower rung of God's favorite kids. Look, look at what I've done. I mean, just look at what I've done, and, and you, you would agree with me. And if we, we can't forgive ourselves, we, we begin to transfer those feelings not only to God, but to other people. Two, when we come across someone who has done what we have done in our past, we take our anger out on them when really we're mad at ourselves. That, that's why for many of us, there are two or three sins that we see uh, 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 for other particular ones in the lives of other people that just drive us crazy and we overreact and become very critical of them. And the reason is not them, it's you. You're mad at yourself, and anything that reminds you of why you're mad at yourself then makes you mad at that person. How could they do such a... And all the time you're thinking, what? In fact, that's, you're aware of that because you've been there. You know exactly what you're thinking. And that's where, you know, even as dads, you know, when some guy wants to take out your daughter... And you go, I know what you're thinking. I was there. I know, I know. You, don't, you can't shine me on, you little nerd. <laughs> yeah, okay. <clears throat> People around you have to walk on eggshells because they never know what's going to set you off. It's just kind of like you're, you're, you know, the, the pistol is cocked and it just it won't take much and it, it'll, go, it'll go off. That's why it's so important for all of us to be able to deal with our past so that we can move on to our future. Because if we don't deal with our past, we'll never be, uh, be able to deal with our future, and then that destroys our present. There are a couple of things that stand in the way of us being able to move on. and Not one of them is misunderstanding this nature of forgiveness in general. And I think this is just huge. So if you could tune in with me just for a couple of minutes and then you can go back to sleep if you want to, that'd be fine. Oftentimes, there, there is this thinking that if I say the words, I forgive you, then it's a done deal. I don't know if you bought into that. If I say the words, I forgive myself, then it's a done deal. I, I forgive my, I do, I forgive myself. But, but saying words has very little to do with the actual forgiveness. And, and if you are one who would say, you know, I've, I've tried to forgive myself, um, I write this down, I have in your insert there, okay? You can pull your insert out. You don't try to forgive. You either do or you don't. There is no trying in forgiveness. And, and if you think there is, then you have a, a, maybe a faulty understanding, a little bit confused in what forgiveness is really all about. Let me, let me see if I can explain it like this. Whenever anyone hurts you, whenever anyone sins against you, there's always a sense in which they have taken something from you. Whenever there is pain, you can fill this in, or loss... There is always debt. We, we understand this when it comes to somebody stealing money from you. In order to make things right, they first need to give you the money back, right? Oh, I'm really sorry I took your money. It's kind of like, well, then give it back, right? I mean, there's that, that debt thing. If, if you took something from me, then give it back first before we talk about forgiveness, before, before, before you come back and say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's like, you're sorry, then, then give me the money back, right? I mean, that just makes sense to us. You would say, 
you owe me. Forgiveness has to do with you owe me. When you give me back what you took from me, then all will be even. And then I'll consider forgiving you. The same thing happens relationally. A wife criticizes her husband in public and she, she takes from him respect. And he feels that she owes him respect. A father walks out on his children and those children grow up with a sense of debt. Dad, you owe me. You owe me a, a parent at home when I was growing up. Whenever there is hurt, whenever there is pain, debt is created. And you can repair relationships by paying back that debt. But when you have sinned against yourself, when you have hurt yourself, how do you pay yourself back? That's the biggest hope buster when you feel like You're a loser. How do you make things right with yourself? Jesus even said, love others as you love yourself. And some of us do that very well. We hate ourselves and we hate everybody else. And that's just the way life is. And we get caught in this death spiral. As a pilot, you know, you get into a death spiral. I mean, that's, it just winds it up and, and you end up crashing and burning. When we, when we hurt ourselves or sin against ourselves, we create a debt within ourselves. I can't believe that I did that. I can't believe that I would stoop so low. What a loser I am. Ever had that conversation? And here's the problem. The only way to pay yourself back is to not have done it in the first place. You can make things right with other people all day long, but you still live with that disappointment, that that sense of loss. How could I have done such a thing? They may forgive me, but I don't. What is wrong with me? And we're stuck. We can't undo what we've done. We can't pay ourselves back for our loss. So round and round and round we go doing everything we can to pay ourselves back. And we don't even understand and realize what we're doing. We work harder so we can feel better about ourselves. We we brag about all the hours that we put in and we don't take vacations and we're hoping somebody will say, oh man, you, you're my hero. You work your tail off and you never take any time off. That's that's stupid is what that really is. But I mean, we, 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 we work harder. Um, we, we promise, we promise to God more. Oh God, if you'll, if you'll do this, or God, if you'll, I, I'll do this for you. Uh, um, maybe we give more, we serve more, we volunteer more, trying to feel better about ourselves. And we become driven people with anger just below the surface. So I volunteer, and you didn't, what is your problem? I'm working, I'm working hard, and I showed up on time. Where, what is your problem? Why don't you volunteer? <laughs> Just below the surface, and, and we're stuck in a death spiral, wondering, is this freedom? I mean, I love Jesus and everything, but I just feel like I'm stuck. This, this is horrible. The good news is that God has provided a way out of your stuckness, or stuckedness, if that's a word. God has provided a way. It's good news. And so I want to tell you the truth about you. And you may know this about you already, but just let me remind you quickly and then we'll move on. It's only as we understand what forgiveness really is from God's perspective that we can understand how to forgive ourselves. As long as we hold the debt over our own heads, there's just no way out. It is a death spiral. So number one, You were dead because of sin. According to the book of Colossians, now Paul writes to this little church in Colossae, and he says in uh, chapter 2, verse 13, you were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. 
Ever since Adam and Eve sinned, we have all been born sinners. Now that, if you have a little child at home, a baby or a preschooler, you know that. You don't have to teach them how to be selfish. You don't have to teach. In fact, what's their first word normally? Mine, me, you know, you can't, you know, no to mama. You don't have to teach them how to be bad. That's just the way that we were born. Uh, Nobody had to teach us how to sin. We came up with that quite naturally. How to lie. How to get our own way. I can do it myself. It's mine. Uh, Nobody's going to tell me what to do. Interesting. In our society, what we're going through now, nobody's going to tell me what to do. You know know when you learned that? Nobody's going to tell. No, I, I live in a free country. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. You learned that. Way back when. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. It flows from something deep inside us. The word sin simply means to miss the mark. That's what the word sin means. We miss the plan that God had intended for us. God had a perfect plan for us and we missed it. Paul wrote to the Roman Christians and he said that all of us have sinned. Romans 3.23, he says, and you know, the, that the wage that sin pays is, is death. Sin kills, he says. And, and the truth about you and me is that we were dead because of sin. We need to just start right there. Okay, I was, I was dead. I was dead because of sin in my life. But, in the next verse, later on that verse, God made you alive with Christ. If you've chosen to follow Jesus, if you've asked Jesus to come into your life, God made you alive with with Christ. Verse 13, the last half. Then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all our sins. How did he make us alive with Christ? How? He forgave all your sins. He forgave all your sins. How how many of your sins? All your sins. All of them. That's why Jesus went to the cross. That's why the cross is a big deal. Because Jesus paid for all our sins. He gave, forgave you for the sins you committed against other people. He forgave you for the sins you committed against him. And he forgave you for the sins you committed against yourself. So you can forgive yourself because of what Jesus did. Now, what, what does that he forgave us? What, what does that really mean? And Paul brings that into the discussion, this, this whole debt thing that we talked about, when you owe me, when you hurt me, when, when you sin against me, you owe me. There's that sense of indebtedness. And Paul, in the next verse, he says that God canceled your record of wrongs. God canceled your record of wrongs. Verse 14, he canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. How? How did he take it away? He nailed it to the cross. When you hear that phrase, he nailed it. You know what that means? He nailed it. Now, downstairs, we're learning about nailing things and stuff, and nobody's poked a hole in their hand or anything yet that I, that I know of. We did smash a finger yesterday. But other than that, but when you hear that phrase, he nailed it, he did it just right. He did exactly what needed to be done. Jesus nailed it. On the cross. He took all of our sin. All of our sin. He paid all of our debt. The whole record of wrongs was nailed to the cross. It's canceled. It's paid in full. I don't know if you've ever paid off a bill or paid off a house or whatever. When you get that that, that, uh, title in the mail and there's that stamp on it that says paid in full. Do you know what that does? I mean, just like, yeah, paid that sucker off. I nailed it. Nailed it. That's what Jesus did. That's good news. That's news that people need to hear because we're nailing ourselves for some of the things that we do. And 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 you know, really, truth be known, and I put this right on your insert there, you can fill this in. You don't have to forgive yourself because yourself has already been forgiven. The work's already been done. You just need to accept it. And that is really tough for us. Yeah, no, not me. I, I'm. 
forgiving ourselves and then moving beyond our past and having peace with our past is, is not so much about forgiveness, it's about accepting the fact that Jesus Christ at the cross stamped on your certificate of debt canceled. You're a new person. You don't owe me, God says. You don't, don't, I don't know if you're, as a parent, if your children come up, you know, what, what, what can I do to make you love me, Dad? What, what do I do to make you like me, Mom? I mean, he's just like, that's not, a, it's not I, I love you, that's it, you know, so we don't have to earn our parents' love, we don't aren't supposed to, and God would say that same thing. You don't have to earn my love. You don't owe me. I know you've sinned. I paid for your sin on the cross. You don't owe me. You don't owe the people around you. There's so many of us that are living trying to impress other people. I want to impress you because I'm, I'm your pastor, and so I want you to like me, and so I try to do things that, that, so you'll like me, right? That's why I do all the good stuff that I do, because I want you to like me. Wrong motivation. You, you don't owe yourself. You don't owe yourself a debt that's been paid for. All the debt has been paid. All of it. It's over. It's done. On the cross, it's done. Now you say, may, maybe, well, does that mean we don't have to go back and pay the people you know, that we stole from or that to make things right? And that's a whole different subject. That's not what we're talking about here. We're to love each other. We're to submit to each other. We are to, as much as is possible, be at peace with each other. But not from the vantage point of paying people back for all the sins that we've committed against them. Because all, all, all of your sin has been forgiven. We learn to love because Jesus loved. And Jesus told us to love. Not because we owe it to them. You, you, you don't owe anybody anything in regards to sin. You don't owe God. You don't owe others. You don't owe yourself. Now, now why would God do that? Why would God set us free from that? Because God knows what we know, if we'll allow ourselves to admit that we know this. You can't forgive yourself. Because you can't possibly go back and undo what you've already done. So you just have to live with it. And it comes back to haunt you. Oh, I'm really a bad person. Oh, I did that again. I'm, man, I'm really, a low, I'm, I'm really bad. You, you're caught in an endless cycle of guilt and chaos and tension and frustration and anger. Do you know any angry church people? Oh, they're sweet and kind and lovely at the right time. But you meet them at the wrong time, and it's like, what? You know any, are you one of those kind of people? All smiles on the one side, and the next side is like, what happened? What did you drink? What did you eat? Did you get out of the wrong side of the bed? What happened? It's a death spiral. Unless you accept the fact that what you're trying to pay back has already been paid. I mean, you're shadow boxing. You're fighting. You're fighting a, a foe that's already been defeated. And you think the devil would get in on that if he could? <laughs> you're darn tootin' he would. And you know why? Because it works. All he has to do is whisper to you. And I don't know if you, I, I get this, I mean, standing right up here, he whispers things to me like, you don't have anything to talk about. Who do you think you are? Think that ever gets to me? Does it ever get to you? I mean, who, what right do I have to say as a representative of Jesus Christ? It's like, and I do stupid things, and I think, they, and they come in, it's, it's funny. Well, it's not funny, but I'll be preaching, and there's thoughts that come into my mind that I could say, and, and God being my helper, I don't always say them because they're not even clean sometimes, you know. I mean, they're just like, whoa, where did that come from? You ever get those little darts, little fiery darts that come in? It's like, yeah, yeah. Well, where did that one come from? And it happens right here, right here in front of God and everybody. And I know it happens 
to you too. So there's an enemy to your souls who would love to destroy you and make you feel horrible and rotten. And, and that way, it kind of destroys our testimony because you know, we're fighting with ourselves and there's anger right underneath the surface and things happen and we just blow up and people look at us like, what? You're, you're a Christian, huh? Yeah. Let, let me put it this way. At the cross, you lost the right to condemn yourself. This is huge. At the cross, you lost the right to condemn yourself. Romans chapter 8, verse 1, Paul writes this. So now, there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. Do you belong to Christ Jesus? Are you following him? Did you ask him to come into your life to forgive your sin? There is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. How much condemnation? None, nada, zip, zero, no condemnation. But see, somehow we think that's spiritual. Oh, yeah, but i gotta be, I got to humble myself. I'm a loser. I'm a bad person. I can't do that. And, so, and we, we, we uh, compare humility with beating ourselves up, condemnation. It's not, they're not the same. I'll have to preach a sermon on humility. Humility is strength. You know, it's, it's, it's power that we have it's under control. We know who we are. We know how, who God made us to be. Jesus was the most humble person. We're, we're told in the scripture to model, out, model our lives after him. Jesus was humble. Now, God doesn't condemn you. The devil can't condemn you. He can try. He can send in those thoughts. And if you pick up on them, he can try. Um... Other people cannot condemn you. And again, they try. Oh, you're this and that. And if you believe what they say, it works. And then get this. You, you better quit condemning yourself because your debt has already been canceled. When you condemn yourself, you're saying, yeah, Jesus, you went to the cross and everything, but I still know. That, that wasn't good enough, Jesus. You dying for me, that's, that's not enough. It's not? What do we want him to do for us? He paid it all. And then you say, well, yeah, okay. I get, I get that. That makes sense. So what do I do with my memories? I got them up here. I, I got them. I can, I can click back to a memory, a certain day, a certain thing, a certain thing that I screwed up. Those thoughts that, that come back to haunt me about things that I've done in my past. You don't have to run from those things. You don't have to run from your past. You don't have to pretend that it never happened. In fact, you and I need to admit it happened. It happened. In fact, maybe you ought to remind the person next to you. Could you just turn to them and say, it happened. You did it. Yes, you did. Go ahead. Just tell them it happened. It really did. It's there. And you can't erase it. You might as well not try to run from it. It, it, it happened. Sometimes you hope that nobody else will find out that it happened. I mean, it's just like our little secret, God, right? You and me, and shoot, if Casey ever finds out that I did that, she's out, you know, oh, man, if Angie ever finds out that I'm not a perfect dad, then what's she going to, you know, it's all those kind of goofy things that we bring up in our minds. <clears throat> but, but the Bible t talks about us, how we can renew our minds. Romans 12, chapter 1, renewing our minds and making, you know, taking every thought captive. Um, your past is a memorial to the goodness of God. Your past is a memorial to the goodness of God. For, for heaven's sake, don't ignore your past. You'll be doomed to do it over again, okay? You need to remember what you did in the past and let it be, become a memorial to the goodness of God. You know what a memorial is, right? If you go back to Washington, D.C., there's this Washington Monument and it's a memorial to remind us of George Washington, right? The Washington Memorial. The Lincoln Memorial reminds us of 
Abraham Lincoln, yeah, and, and what he stood for. So when we have, there's the Vietnam Memorial that's back, it reminds us of that, and all the lives that were lost there. And there's just a memorial after memorial after memorial. And, and um, the things that have happened in our past, um, need, we need to look at them as, as ways that they, they've, they've happened to allow us um, to, to remember that God has done some great things. And yeah, I did that. I did that, and that I'm not. I'm not proud of that. But God, God took that and He used that, and now I am the person that I am today because I did some stuff in the past. God has been good to me. God has helped me grow. God has helped me to become a new person following Jesus. I always remember in high school when I'd hear testimonies. You know, the Hell's Angels guys or the guys that were all drug rock and rollers and everything, and I'm thinking. Man, I need a testimony like that. I, I, need, I need a testimony, you know, where I can go up and say, I was doing this and I was, I didn't. I was just kind of an okay guy. I didn't do anything horrible, bad. <clears throat> I, I thought. I was selfish and rude and, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. But, I mean, I didn't do those kinds of things. And then I met one of our youth pastors that we hired in Quincy. He said that before he became a Christian, he used to beat people up just for fun. Big guy, strong guy, wrestler, you know, and everything. And he would just see somebody drive down the road in Eugene, Oregon, and he'd see him there, and he'd stop and beat him up. And I'm thinking, you're, a, you're horrible. You're, what a rotten thing to do. And then I was so thankful that I didn't go through something like that, and I didn't kill anybody, and I didn't, you know, I didn't do some of the things that, you know, seemed so exciting <clears throat> at the time. Your failures can now remind you of the goodness and the grace of Jesus Christ in your life, whatever they are. And when the devil reminds you of your past, that happens. You know, when he reminds you of your past, let, let me give you a little hint here. Just remind him of his future. Okay? That, that really works. He didn't like that. Okay? So you, you just take the bull by the horns, in this case the devil by the horn, or the lion, you know, that's trying to destroy you, and you just, just remind him of what, what's coming, because it's going to come. It's, it's recorded in the scripture, so you just remind him of that. And one more cool thing, and then we'll wrap up today. At the cross, your future was determined. At the cross, your future was determined. Romans 8, chapter, chapter 8, verse 2. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. You are free. You are free. We don't live like we're free sometimes. We live like we're all in bondage and we're angry. That anger is just right under the surface. And if you mess with me, I'll mess with you and all that kind of stuff. There is no reason in the world for you to be afraid of your past. No reason. No, no reason to try to avoid it or hope that no one finds out about it. Because at the cross, all condemnation was removed. And you... We're set free. That's good news. That's news, good news that people in our society need to hear today because we feel like we're under bondage. And you lost the right to condemn yourself. When Jesus went to the cross, you lost the right to condemn yourself. And you know what can get in your way? In your way? Pride. Pride keeps you from dealing with your past. I can't believe I did that, we say. I can't understand. I mean, I can understand you doing it, but I can't understand me doing it. I wasn't raised that way. So you can be that way, but, but I can't. And we set a different standard for ourselves. I'm better than that. That's below me. I don't do that. That's stupid, and I'm not. And yet I did it. I know better. I can't believe that I would do something like that. I'm such a loser. Do you know something about you that uh, you, you not only did what you did, whatever it is that you did, yes, you, you did that, but you are capable of a lot worse. Do you know that? You, you are capable of a lot worse. Other than the great, by the grace of God being a part of your life, there's no telling what you could have done or I could have done. 
Because all of us are selfish. All of us are self-centered to the core. In a word, all of us are sinners. We've missed God's perfect plan for us. Sinners don't need a second chance. They need a Savior. Sinners don't need a second chance. You know that, don't you? Sinner, you, you sinner, you and me, sinner. You don't need a second chance. Do you know what sinners do the second time around when they get a second chance? They sin. You know what they do the third time around? They sin again. Can you, and you know what they do the fourth and the fifth and the sixth time around? Do you think God knows that about you? And then you'll keep doing it again? Only you'll tweak it a little bit so maybe it's not quite as bad or a little bit different or not like that guy. I'm not as bad as that person. But then they go ahead and sin again. That's why God sent a Savior to save us from our sin. That's why he came. That's why Christmas Jesus came to be our Savior. You don't have to forgive yourself because yourself has already been forgiven. So the next time, maybe this is your Christmas present to yourself today, the next time you say, I can't believe I did that. I'm, I'm like the worst. You can say, oh no, that's, that, that was taken away at the cross. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But I did that. I feel horrible about that. But I have a Savior. Jesus saved me from that sin and I can live in freedom. I don't have to live under the bondage and the guilt and the shame of being such a dirty, rotten, horrible sinner. You, you are, and I am. We are sinners. We have a Savior. So this Christmas, I, I hope, I hope for you that you would put your hope in the Savior of the God. I can't do it on my own. I need you. So, what are you going to do with that? What are you going to do? Don't just get up and run out of here and grab some candy and life goes on. Let's just take a minute like we do here. Just think about, God, what do you want me to do with what I just heard? What do I need? To, is there a prayer that you need to pray right now just between you and God? Let's just take a minute. We'll play some music quietly and uh, then I'll come back here and pray in just a minute, okay? What are you going to do with what you just heard? And on the back of your Connect card, there's a couple suggestions. If you feel like the next steps are there, that would be great. Okay, let's take a minute. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for protecting us from ourselves. I pray that you would give us the grace to face our failures in the context of your love for us remind us of your love for us that goes beyond our sin we're not too bad for you we're not too bad for the cross in fact we are the reason for the cross thank you Jesus for coming to be the savior of the world to be our savior you knew we needed a savior and you came and paid for our sin. And I pray, Lord, that you would help us to see our past, to look at our past as a memorial of your goodness. Yeah, we did some stuff that we're ashamed of, but it's all under the blood of Jesus. It's, it's because, it was all nailed to the cross. It was taken care of, and we don't have to keep beating ourselves up for it over and over and over again. Thank you, Jesus, for for giving us a new life and new hope. And I pray that especially during this season, this, both this Christmas season and this season with pandemic and the fear that's going around, I pray, Father, that you would give us, fill us with your hope and to, to know that we are your kids and you have a place prepared for us and we can live in freedom because of what you did for us. Lord, help us to live out the truth that is in your word, to, to experience the hope that only comes from a relationship with you. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for this truth that sets us free. Help us to live in freedom this day. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said...
And all you outside, you can honk your way all the way out of the parking lot, okay? God bless you. Next week, we're going to have a great time. We're going to continue on this hope theme. Then we'll have a little party the next week, Lord willing. And then it'll be Christmas before you know it. Can you believe that already? Wow. All right, have a great week.